Hi, welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe RNA interference. If you're following the AQA spec, then you need to be able to describe siRNA. And if you're following the edXL spec, then you need to be able to describe both siRNA and miRNA. Okay, now, so far on this topic, we've looked at how transcription of genes can be controlled. Scientists call this gene expression. And we've seen that hormones such as estrogen can trigger the transcription of target genes. The messenger RNA which is produced is then translated, synthesizing the proteins encoded by those genes. We've also seen how epigenetic mechanisms such as DNA methylation can reduce the transcription of genes. Now, there is another way in which cells can regulate the levels of specific proteins. This is called RNA interference. We're going to start by looking at RNA interference involving small interfering RNAs, or siRNAs. Before we start, I just want to recap the structure of RNA. I'm showing you here a short stretch of RNA. Remember that RNA is a polymer containing four different bases. These bases are guanine, cytosine, adenine, and uracil. I'm using the letters G, C, A, and U. However, in the exam, I'd recommend using the full names. Now, we've already seen several different types of RNA in A-level biology. For example, we've seen messenger RNA, transfer RNA, and ribosomal RNA. And all of these RNA molecules consist of one strand. OK, so let's take a look at RNA interference by siRNA. This takes place in eukaryotic organisms and some prokaryotes. Now, the first idea you need to understand is that siRNA starts with double-stranded RNA. And I'm showing you double-stranded RNA here. I'm only showing a relatively short stretch of double-stranded RNA. In reality, this would be much longer. Now, double-stranded RNA can be present as a result of viral infections. It can also be produced by other processes within the cell. OK, now notice that this double-stranded RNA has complementary base pairing. Guanine on one strand forms hydrogen bonds with cytosine on the other strand. And adenine on one strand forms hydrogen bonds with uracil on the other strand. OK, now in the first stage, the double-stranded RNA attaches to an enzyme called DISA. And this takes place in the cytoplasm. DISA hydrolyzes the double-stranded RNA into shorter fragments. These fragments are called small interfering RNA, or siRNA. siRNAs are around 21 base pairs long, but remember that I'm showing them shorter than they actually are. And I'm only showing one of the siRNA molecules. Now the siRNA combines with a number of proteins. We call this structure the RISC which stands for RNA-induced silencing complex. Now, one of the RNA strands is broken down, so now the risk contains single-stranded siRNA. Okay, now the key idea you need to understand is that this siRNA is complementary to a specific messenger RNA, and I'm showing that messenger RNA here. So now the single-stranded siRNA in the risk forms hydrogen bonds to the complementary bases on the mRNA. At this point, an enzyme in the risk hydrolyzes the mRNA into smaller fragments. And because of this, translation of that mRNA cannot take place. So as you can see, as a result of this siRNA, we have down-regulated levels of a specific protein. OK, now if you're following the edXL spec, then you also need to be able to describe miRNA. And as you'll see, miRNA and siRNA have some similarities. Now, miRNAs are produced as precursor molecules when certain genes are transcribed. These precursor molecules are called primary miRNA or pri-miRNA. And the key idea you need to understand is that primary miRNA consists of one RNA strand. However, the RNA strand loops back on itself and bases in the RNA strand hydrogen bond with complementary bases further down the strand. So the primary miRNA has a hairpin structure, as I'm showing you here. In the cytoplasm, the enzyme DISA now hydrolyzes the primary miRNA, and we now have two separate strands of miRNA. One of these strands of miRNA now combines with proteins to form the risk, 
and the other miRNA strand is usually destroyed. However, in some cases, the other miRNA strand can also form a risk. Okay, now the miRNA binds to a target mRNA molecule via complementary base pairing. Notice that when miRNA base pairs with mRNA, there may be regions that are not complementary. So base pairing cannot take place in these regions. Okay, now enzymes within the risk can break down the target mRNA before it can be translated. Alternatively, the presence of the risk on the mRNA can simply block translation from taking place. Now I said before that there may be some non-complementary regions between the miRNA and the mRNA. This means that the same miRNA can stop translation of a number of slightly different mRNA molecules. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe RNA interference.